good midweek for you guys to uh, take advantage of two home games, get two games over 500 again. I mean, you guys did what you should have done against Incarnate Word. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, always good to get those midweek Ws, and it can be a challenge around here just in Texas. Uh, just the level of competition is so good, and everybody can hit fastballs, and most pitchers can throw fastballs and all that. So it was a good test for us and get some hitters seeing the ball a little bit better after these past couple of days, which is sort of the goal for those midweek games mm-hmm. since most of that weekend pitching is ideally it's spent on trying to win conference series. So it was nice to see that from a hitter standpoint, and we got some uh, pitchers, some innings on the mound that we probably needed to get. Daniel Castano was terrific last night, and um, the other guys have been throwing the ball really well. It was good to get Dylan out there and mm-hmm. extend him a little bit, and uh, we're just looking forward to you know, building that on that momentum for Austin. Good. Y'all didn't exactly hit the cover off the ball against Incarnate Word, but hitting you did enough to get the two wins. Where do you feel like you guys are hitting-wise, offense-wise now going into this Texas series? You know, it's getting better. The things you look at from a coaching standpoint, I think, can't be results in terms of batting average or doubles or triples or home runs or anything like that. What we've been looking at is are we swinging at the right pitches? We understand that the season is a grind and that, The results are not always going to go our way, and they're not always not going to go our way. So to get in this kind of funk that we've been in the past couple weeks offensively is is not totally discouraging because we have seen some improvements individually from guys just two-strike approach, willing to go the other way, um, you know, swinging at the right pitches, things like that. So I think we're doing a better job with all three of those things. And I think the results are just going to come in time with that. Very good. And the uh, the pitching has been solid for you guys. I mean, the three weekend starters have been really consistent for the most part. And then the uh, defense, after some early season struggles, the defense has come around, and it's it's uh, at a winning level, don't you think? Absolutely. You know, every season is a process with pitching, defense, hitting, and all that. And what a privilege and a pleasure it's been to just been able to watch Brad Koontz and Austin Stone and Dylan Newman throw the ball on the weekends. For all the challenges that we've seen from the tough schedule to playing the young guys in the field to being in the offensive funk that we are in right now, <laughs> what a pleasure it is. And, privilege, you know, you get to run those three guys out on the weekend and you, yeah. you don't want to ever take them for granted. So it's awesome to have those guys there. And defensively, I, I really think that we're, we've got the right pieces in the right places. Um, and that that does – We've also, we're a little versatile in terms of our bench guys as well. We can move them around a little bit if we need to, but I think with moving Brett Doe to shortstop and then being able to get Maddie Menard back there at catcher has, has really helped us, and we're also improving on the corners and in the outfield as well. Good. Uh, you know, I've heard it said before and, and seen it actually that hitting is contagious. Uh, it can Is poor hitting contagious also in a bad way? <laughs> it absolutely is, unfortunately, and you know, when you get those guys on base and you're not able to get them in maybe with less than two outs, runners in scoring position, things like that, it, you know, it takes a breath out of you. And if you're a, kind of a baseball fan, you can feel it too, just as much as we feel it in the dugout. And it doesn't mean we're trying, not trying as hard as we can to succeed in terms of that. And, and those guys are, are doing the best they can. But yeah, when you're not going good, it, it just happens at downhill slide and Thankfully, the baseball season is 56 games long. We kind of talked uh, a couple weeks ago about, man, what if it was like football and we had a 12-game season and we just played on Saturday? So how tough would it be, you know, to, to play the game? So the good thing about baseball, as everybody says, is we get to play again tomorrow, and uh, we're just thankful for that opportunity, and we're looking forward to turning that around on offense. Good. That's a good way to look at it. Well, tomorrow is uh, another road trip. Go down to Austin to play Texas. They're playing – pretty well themselves tough place to play good pitching I mean it shapes up as a a really uh you just looking at it on paper low scoring pitching dominated series going in yeah it certainly does with dish falk and the dimensions and then the turf with the natural hops and the infield and the arms that both of us are going to have running out there this weekend I think you're right it's going to be whoever plays catch the best it's going to be timely hitting situational stuff uh whoever's able to you know do what the game asks I think is going to have the success, and I think we're prepared for that. When you talk about facing good pitching, man, just look at the the guys we've had to face on down the line since opening day. You know, when you talk about 
two or three All-Americans that we see from Arizona State and all the way down. Um, we're prepared for that. And, you know, obviously it doesn't, you know, really help the overall stats, seeing the arms that we've been ha- having to see. But, uh, you know, they're, they're ready for the challenge and, and they're looking forward to it. Good. You uh, you didn't grow up around here. You didn't grow up around around Texas baseball, state of Texas baseball. But I'm sure it doesn't take long to uh, to uh, you know learn the history of UT baseball and Southwest Conference now Big Twelve. But they missed the tournament last year. Missed the Big Twelve tournament. They've definitely bounced back nicely from that. Yeah, no doubt. It was funny just coming down here from Kentucky and the first year last year just. Texas finishes last in the Big 12, mm-hmm. what? And we sw- sweep them, and, uh, you know, they really struggled. And when you talk about tradition and history in, in college baseball, Texas is obviously one of the first few programs uh, that that comes up. And just I had the opportunity to play with a couple of their big league guys that have come through, Drew Strubs and a couple other guys. And, uh, you know, but that doesn't mean that they don't face their challenges, uh, even though you're Texas or – you know, a high-profile program, you know, that I played against in the SEC, like LSU, South mm-hmm. Carolina, they, you know, they're all up and down. Florida's, you know, didn't make the t- – you know, they were one of the last teams in the tournament last year at Florida. Mm-hmm. So I think it speaks to the the parity in the college game of kids just wanting to get in the get in the game freshman year and play a lot and, you know, not necessarily as willing to – sit there just to say they got to play for the University of Texas. And I I also think it speaks to the strength of the Big 12. You know, most people assumed last year that the league was down. And I think that getting three teams in the tournament was as low as a number that they had had in the past few years. But my response or question to that would be how many other conferences in the country would last year's Texas team have finished last in? And I don't think there are any. Yeah. Um, so I think with that, you know, the Big 12 is, you know, as strong as it's been in a while this year, I would think. And Texas is right back where they're used to being. So.